guys! Ray from Whimsical Pictures here, and welcome to Hanukkah Manga, where we all get a cup of something nice and cozy and warm, and I talk about the manga that I read for this week. And today I am wrapping up the third week in Yuri in Real Life's uh, February Manga Challenge, the aim of which is to read at least one volume of manga per day. And I did pretty good. The last one of these that I posted was on Monday, so it's actually been six days, and I read nine books, which is uh, pretty solid, I think. You know, not going too overboard with it, but I think I did pretty decently. So, uh, without further ado, let's get started. And last week I talked about the first three volumes of Immortal Rain by Kaori Ozaki. So I also mentioned that I had the first seven with me. So of course I finished the last four that I had on hand, starting with volume four, volume five. And this one is weird because Tokyo Pop is inconsistent was, I guess. This actually has, like, really thick, like, cardstock type paper. Um, and the ink actually doesn't show up very well on it. Like, you get a lot of deep blacks, but you also get this graininess where it's supposed to be sort of a solid screen tone. So you have this thick paper, and then you have this, like, really flimsy matte cover um, and spine that does not support the heavy cardstock inside at all. And it's just this volume that's like this. So these are just normal average volumes, and you can see that in the yellowing. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that's five. Six. And volume seven. And I like this cover a lot. It's really cute. So these were like the first three days, maybe like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday or something. And I actually, even though I enjoyed the first three volumes, I actually, volume four is where I really started getting into the series. Um, I think it was the first volume I rated four stars and I have rated every book after that in the series four stars as well. This, I don't want to tell you anything that happens in it, but basically shit go gets real and it goes down. Um, a lot of stuff happened that I wasn't expecting, and there was a lot of action, even some horror. I'll show you this really freaky image early on if I can find it. Can I find it? I found it! That's creepy. That's like a woman. <laughs> so, it gets really weird and creepy and sci-fi, so uh, there's some really great romance in here too, and I continue to love Machika as a protagonist. We also get Ayla, who is sort of a supporting character, but she's a great female character as well. Um, yeah, this is just, it's really good, and I really want to get a hold of the last, I want to say, four volumes. I think there's 11 in the series so that I can read it because I'm really invested now. <laughs> um, I was so invested, in fact, that I went out and I bought The God's Lie, which is also by Kaori Ozaki. This is a one-shot by her and was released this past year, very recently. This is about basically this boy, Natsuru, who wants to be a baseball player and has sort of a kind of deadbeat hikikomori mom. And this girl, Ryo, who is taking care of her little brother, waiting for their father to come back, but it's increasingly looking like he's not going to. Um, he has claimed that he is uh, fishing in Alaska. And it's just the story of the summer break that the two spend together and sort of their feelings of loss and abandonment and coming of age 
ultimately, I mean, I thought it was a solid enough one-shot. I gave it 3.5 stars, but it's just kind of fine. <laughs> um, I have actually been enjoying Immortal Rain more. I just think that this is uh, pretty much what you expect to happen happens. It doesn't really say anything particularly deep or anything about, like, the state of humanity or whatever. And uh, I'm also kind of irritated because the copy that I got is actually, like, printed wrong. If you can see the spine there, it doesn't line up the way it's supposed to. And that's irritating, because it's otherwise a beautiful book. But, yeah. Uh, it's fine. <laughs> it's worth reading if it sounds interesting to you. But, I don't know. Didn't really blow me away. The next thing that I read was something I also picked up on this trip to the store, and that is... Oh, no! I got some chocolate on it. I can fix that later. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. But this is Volume 3 of Happiness by Shuzo Oshimi. Um, kind of a creepy cover there. But this is about a boy who gets bitten by a vampire girl in the middle of the night and starts turning into a vampire. Or, as somebody on Twitter called it, uh, Shuzo Oshimi and the No Good Very Bad Sexual Awakening, which I think is every single Shuzo Oshimi manga, but this one in particular happens to be a horror manga about vampires, so it really is the No Good Very Bad Sexual Awakening of this kid. <laughs> um, this continues to get better and better. This volume in particular was so good. <laughs> It's really interesting. We're starting to get more vampire characters developed, which is good because we're getting sort of a wider cast than just um, Makoto, that's his name, Makoto himself. Um, the art continues to be fantastic. I just love the way that Oshimi portrays what the night looks like to a vampire. It's so trippy. There's some beautiful color pages in the beginning of this one as well. Just a couple, but, yeah. Gorgeous. His art is just... I love that he's not afraid to experiment. You get some really trippy sort of sequences like this. And, yeah, this is just a really great vampire manga, and I definitely recommend it. Especially if you've liked any of Oshimi's other works, like Flowers of Evil or Inside Mari. But, even if not, this is probably a great place to start with his work. The next one that I read was continuing a series from last week, and that is reading Volume 3 of Blood Blockade Battlefront. This is as far as I've gotten in this series uh, so far. I really need to just sit down and read the other uh, four just all at once. <laughs> but... This volume I rated slightly lower than the previous two, just because we get introduced to Elegula, the uh, queen of Monomania, um, who I thought was really entertaining in the anime, but in the manga I feel like I just didn't get much of a picture of her, which I guess is probably because I assume she doesn't show up as much, uh, because she is like part of the big conspiracy that's in the anime's arc. but. I was just kind of disappointed that we didn't get more character from her, because she is such a kook in the anime. But the first story in this is really entertaining. It involves, um, Chain, who is on the cover here and doesn't get any focus at all in the anime, so I'm happy to see some stories that are more focused on her in here, as well as, uh, Steven. Uh, Steven Starface, <laughs> who also doesn't get a whole lot of, uh, focus in the anime. That's him. But this continues to be really entertaining. My feelings from the first two volumes continue for this one, so if you'd like to see how I felt about those, I will link last week's wrap-up in the doobly-doo below. And yeah, I just need to continue with the series and finish it. The next book that I read is a one-shot, and this is actually the first book that I've rated five stars that I've read from this challenge, and that is Secret of the Princess by Milk Morinaga. 
This is a new Yuri title from Milk Morinaga, who is the author of Girlfriends and Kisses, Sighs, and Cherry Blossom Pink and Gakuen Polisi, which we've gotten here before. This is by far my favorite from her that I've read that's been released in English so far. This was so sweet and adorable and I loved the characters. It was paced really well. I love just the positivity of it. It does address homophobia, but then it shows how like kind and accepting um, the people in these characters' lives actually are, which is really nice and refreshing that as opposed to just like completely ignoring that homophobia exists and creating like a fantasy world where nobody has ever heard of homophobia before, like a lot of Yuri and like, for example, the recent Yuri on Ice, uh, which I think that serves a purpose as well. I do like that it's sort of acknowledged and then dismissed because the people in the book are so nice. <laughs> I don't know. It's just refreshing to me because there's a lot of garbage going around right now in the political climate and this was just really sweet and good and nice and has a really hot tomboy volleyball girl character who is the love interest and the best. So highly recommend this. Um, I think it'd be a great place to start if you're looking to get into Yuri manga. It does have a lot of the tropes that are common to Yuri manga, but it plays around with them just enough to make it entertaining, and it's just a really likable couple and a really likable story. So yeah. <laughs> and it helps that it's by an actual, like, queer female author. That's always nice. Uh, the final thing that I read is about gay boys, and it's not by a gay boy. <laughs> but... So, you know, I'm a hypocrite, but this is Fumi Yoshinaga's Truly Kindly, which I found at a used bookstore for like two and a half dollars, so I got it even though the spine's a little beat up, as you can see. Uh, the inside of the book looks just fine. This, I think I gave it three stars, but I basically enjoyed some of the stories and was super met on the others, and it kind of goes like from worst to best as you go through the collection. This is a collection of short stories, uh, BL short stories. And I have sort of mixed feelings about Fumi Yoshinaga's BL. You can definitely feel her immaturity as a writer. I think the stuff she did after she got out of BL is a lot more interesting in general, um, and definitely deals with gay issues with a much more sensitive hand, but I'm interested in reading all of her BL because I just love her so much. So, so much. <laughs> and I definitely saw some of what I love in some of the later stories. I really liked um, this one set in Japan about two Japanese uh, former lockpicks who are trying to lead an honest life now. But I really hated these two stories at the beginning. The first one is about like this abusive dude and this like weird murderer. <laughs> and then the second one is about like cheating essentially, which I'm not into at all, ever. <laughs> I'm just, that is a great way to get me to hate your story, honestly, so. <laughs> but all of the back half of the book was pretty good. So. Yeah, I mean, if you like BL, it's probably worth picking up. It's definitely above average for that genre. Um, certainly some of the stories are better than others, but obviously I found this for two and a half dollars, so it was definitely worth that price. Yeah. Fumi Yoshinaga is really good. <laughs> Guys should read her. <laughs> so that's all of what I read for this week. Whoop. Gah. So yeah, I am going to try to finish up Blood Blockade Battlefront this week and then I want to get into um, another series that I've had in my collection for a little bit that I want to sort of get through. And yeah, thanks for watching guys. See you next week and happy reading!